And let's start with Gary Fisher and a PPI update. I welcome Gary to please uh, turn on your camera and your audio. Gary, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Excellent. The first thing, Gary, I would like to say is welcome to PPI. You joined PPI as an executive director this year. So it's really great to have you on the PPI team. And also thank you for your leadership as we go into 2022 and beyond and taking the Institute to the next level. Really appreciate that. But before Gary uh, goes, let me tell you more about Gary's trajectory and allow me to share a few things about him. Gary, as I mentioned, is executive director of the Project Production Institute. He's also the chair of the PPI Energy Working Group. Prior to that, Gary spent 40 years in Chevron's Capital Press Organization and has held a variety of executive positions, most recently as a special project manage, uh, projects manager at Chevron Project Resources Company. In that role, Gary was responsible for Chevron's implementation of project production management and digital transformation on major capital projects. Gary was also responsible for Chevron's project management system and led the group that provided functional expertise across the corporation's worldwide major capital project portfolio. Gary holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering from Colorado State University. Gary, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. So this is gonna be over to you. All Thank right. You. Let me pull up my screen. Thank you, Roberto. And welcome everyone to the, what's gonna be a really good day. Let's start by, let's start by trying to get the screen to move. Okay. Let's start by kind of setting the table. You know, what we do in the construction industry is really big and it's really important. Anywhere you go, you know, pick up newspaper, watch TV, you're going to read that you're going to see the news that uh, how dependent our economy is on infrastructure. It seems like there's always something about infrastructure, something about construction in the news. Um, and the world needs infrastructure. We need bridges, roads, water treatment, hospitals, schools. The world needs affordable and abundant energy. The world needs housing, factories, buildings in which to conduct all kinds of business. As you can see here, 13% of the world's GDP in my last check, that was $85 trillion, is associated with what we do. Man, that's a big and important number. <laughs> but, this, but the story, look at what we've done for how effectively we've invested that money over the past 20 years. It's not very good. So we have a huge opportunity as a construction industry to improve our production efficiency. And things need to change. And things need to change quickly. And that's what PPI is all about. You know, we're, our goal is our purpose to set out to help the industry improve that efficiency of, of those investments. And, and we really want, you know, our vision is real. We want PPM, Project Production Management, to be the dominant paradigm for the delivery of capital projects, the new way we think about how to develop and execute projects. We want project professionals to be thinking about these and using these principles in their everyday work. We want a thriving market for services and tools. And then of course, we wanna to continue to advance the knowledge through research development and education. Who's PPI for? It's us. It's all of us involved in the construction industry. And let's take a little bit, a little tour on how we've been doing over this last year since the last uh, symposium. We're 2,500 mem members strong now. We added 300 folks over this last year, which I'm very excited about. Hopefully we'll continue that trend over the next year. We've made a lot of progress over the last year in the area of education and developing academic partnerships. We've got a really nice program set up with Stanford, Cal Poly, and then Texas A&M Construction Sciences. And I'm gonna cover each one of these in a little bit more detail. Let's start with Cal Poly. This is the one that's probably the furthest down the, furthest down the road on development. 
And the, you know, the wave overtaking the building industry right now is to reduce costs and more effectively control schedule is to productize and move work off site and adopt really manufacturing style techniques. And these methods are known as industrialized construction. You're gonna hear a bunch more about that today. And they can deliver significant benefits. Uh, you know, these things work, but they really can't be done with, you know, accepted project management practice. And I'll be very blunt. You know, if you think you're going to take and manage assembly offsite using the methods you're currently using for on-site construction management, you've, you've just picked a recipe for disaster. That's what I found when I worked for Chevron. And many companies in the building sector are discovering that themselves the hard way today. Well, this program is targeted at those folks to enable participants to understand the benefits of adopting a modern construction framework and how to effectively deal with these new challenges of moving work offsite using production management know-how. This is really specific focus, hands-on education. It includes offsite fabrication done right, then supply chain done right, and the design for offsite fabrication done right. The design is quite different in this, in this situation. Moving on to Texas A&M, we're excited about this one as well, and it's really targeted at folks in the industrial sector. Here again, you know, industrial owners are looking to improve capital projects by moving work off site as well, by employing factory models, harnessing automation, digital productization and standardizing, enabling work through digital technologies. And as you're going to hear a lot about today, these strategies, you know, really part of modern modernizing construction, you know, they can also deliver significant benefits. But again, not without the not with the current outdated project management framework that focuses on more on administration and yet is really just blind, not even seeing the elements of production, you know, and, and the production is a very element that creates value. So in order to modernize construction, we need to really reimagine how we do project management. As you can see, this program starts with that very topic, reimagine project management, and then depending on your specific area of interest, you can take one of three additional classes or uh, courses on reimagining engineering, reimagining procurement, reimagining construction. Hopefully you'll see a pattern there, the EPC pattern. We want to reimagine the whole picture. I promise you that if you attend one or all of these courses or some part of these courses, you will never look at a capital project the same. You're gonna see it from a completely different point of view with different eyes. And then finally, we have a, a program we're just now launching with Stanford's a Center for Professional Deployment. And this is a development and this is something, uh, this program is targeted not so much at the individual, but at companies that want to rapidly really make progress in modernizing the project work using a framework of industrialized construction coupled with autonomous and digital, all on that foundation of operation science that you're gonna hear about from Todd shortly. It'll be customized for each company to deal with their specific needs, their specific situation. It will be dealing with their real problems. This is hands-on work within the company, dealing with their work, it's not theory, it's going to be dealing with their challenges. It, it builds on Stanford's virtual design and construction program that has been delivered to thousands of professionals around the world and provides really a unique opportunity to learn and practice the principles to modernize construction via the application, production thinking, methods, and digital tools. And get, given the intense nature of this, we're limiting enrollment to one or two companies a year and we're taking applications now. We've um, worked on developing partnerships. There are more to come. We were really excited to announce this partnership we formed with the ECC. This really was gonna provide even more reach for operation science and project production management within the EPC community. This gives us opportunities for speaking engagements, working on things together. In particular, I'm excited about working with the future leader group that's associated with the ECC with through education and other hands-on kind of things. Uh, these are the folks that are going to be running um, the EPC business in the future. And if we can change the way they think about, the way they see projects, the way they approach projects, then that's going to be a, a good thing in the long run. We've got a robust industry council. 
as you can see here by kind of looking across the, the slide, it's very diverse. These folks have, have stepped up for a little more deeper involvement in what we're doing with, with PPI. Many of them are on working groups or will be on working groups shortly. We're also involved, actively involved in research with both Berkeley and Stanford in sponsoring things and supporting things to help bring theory to, to real life and projects on how to do things better and differently. Given COVID, we've been very active in the area of virtual events and publications, as you probably noticed. We've had a, a number of, of webinars. And again, all these webinars have been recorded and are on the website. If you want to go catch up, you can find them under the events and publications tabs on the website. We started something new called PPI Thinking, and these are intended to be uh, shorter, more provocative articles just to, to stimulate the thinking and, and just get an idea out there and generate some conversation. And of course, we always have the journal with our more deeper articles. We wish we had more of these. COVID kind of has, has really restricted our ability for in-person seminars. Hopefully this next year that will change and we'll be able to really get back on the road with these things. Working groups are really important. And this is a chance for industry folks to sit with a group of peers on a topic that they're all interested in and share you know, really what they're doing along their journey. We're also bringing, if you will, outside speakers to these uh, working groups to be provocative and looking at how to bring next practices into these segments. We've got an energy working group that's our most advanced and active group so far really excited about some of the things we've seen there and uh, the conversations we've had. We've got a shipbuilding and ship repair working group that's getting off the ground. And we're going to expect really good things from these folks. They have some really unique challenges with in this space, particularly with the repair group. We're also launching an industrialized construction working group. And I'm going to say, if any of these topics are of particular interest to you, you know, drop me a note because we're always looking to add participants to each one of these working groups. And now I'm at a really special point in the presentation here. We get to give out the 2021 PPI Technical Achievement Award. This award is, is given out to an individual that we believe has had significant contribution of thought leadership and production management presented, taught at symposium and sem seminars. It's open to academics and, and practitioners alike. Some of the past recipients are here on the slide. Today's award recipient is in some pretty, pretty interesting and good company. And without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to announce this year's award to James Chu. James, can you turn on your camera? There he is. Congratulations, James. Thank James you. is a Chief Technical Officer of, of a Strategic Project Solutions and has been leading research and development of SPS knowledge process systems, support implementation of SPS offerings since 2001. Since joining SPS, James has worked with various organizations in oil and gas, heavy industrial, civil, aerospace, defense, just any industry involved in construction around the world. I mean, it's been a global activity and adopting and using project production management solutions. <clears throat> James has a kind of a unique history here with PPM as he personally developed the world's first last planner software along with one of the first work packaging applications. He created a parade of trades computer simulation in the mid to late, teen, uh, late, mid to late 1990s. Prior to joining SPS, he, his roles included construction site engineer, research associate at research institutes, teaching assistant at universities, and software developer. He's also been developing computer systems for implementation of lean construction since 1997 during his PhD studies at UC Berkeley. James earned a master's degree in civil engineering from Yonsei University, Korea, a PhD in construction engineering and management from the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department at UC Berkeley. James, I really can't think of a more deserving person for this recognition for your deep contributions to what all things PPM, 
your ever patient mentoring, particularly with me and your technical brilliance. So James, over. Thank you, thank you, Gary. It's a great honor to be the recipient of this year's PPI Technical Award. I'm not sure whether I've yet reached a point in my career to deserve a, such a prestigious award, but I take it as a recognition for all the great work that everyone at SPS and PPI have done and are doing. Personally, I'll endeavor to fulfill the high expectation that my colleagues and friends have set for me. I always consider myself a very fortunate person as I always had a best of luck in finding teachers who pose important, their hard questions and collaborators who share a common vision. In that regard, I'd like to thank everyone at SPS and PPI past and current, as well as all of our customers, partners and members for making our pursuit possible. And I would like to give special thanks to Tazabel for your 20 plus years of leadership and Robert Darvulo for 20 plus years of collaboration. I would also like to thank Professor Iris Tomline for pointing me in this direction early in my career. Again, thank you again for the award and look forward to working with you all in improving the performance of our industry. Welcome to your symposium. All right, thank you, James. Well-deserved. Thank you. So let's look a little bit about 2022 and beyond. We've got another big year planned. Just in a quick summary, we're gonna expand certification globally. We're looking for two universities outside of the US, probably one in the Middle East and one in the Far East to expand our certification program targeted at people and the activities that are going on in those areas. We began working on undergraduate curriculum. I mean, it's, it, this is science and we need to be teaching this science along with all the other sciences that, that folks in, in in a college or university get along the way. So when they come out of with a bachelor degree in something, they are also armed with it, with the science that governs project performance. We're gonna be looking at additional work around partnerships. We've got uh, some very active work going on there. And we're gonna look at adding probably two more working groups. Our current thoughts are to add one around intelligent production and, a, and one on the energy transition. We think that uh, the whole energy transition is really ripe for the uh, robust application of project production management thinking and, and uh, methods. We've been reaching out to trade associations. Uh, these are the folks that represent what uh, are subcontractors on, on many projects like uh, electrical and, and HVAC and those kinds of things. They have really robust training efforts that go with that. And we'd like to see a PPM get embedded into those training efforts. And of course, expanding PPM services and looking for endorsing providers of services, endorsing providers of the tools that are used for application of PPM. So if you've got an interest in any of these, again, please drop me a note and uh, we'll get you involved more deeply. So with that's a snapshot forward. We've got another big year ahead and I'll turn it back over to you, Roberto. Thank you, Gary. Um, I have actually a, well, a couple of things. First of all, James, congratulations on the Technical Achievement Award. Very, very well deserved and pleasure also have having the, the chance to work with you over the years. Gary, just a couple of, of comments So. Pretty impressive what I think PPI has been doing and is planning to do. You're talking about certifications. You're talking about obviously professional certifications, right? You're talking about efforts with the industry council that has been expanded quite significantly. People from different sectors of the industry, shipbuilding, oil and gas, technology companies that are investing in data centers and a variety of organizations in, in, in coming from different parts of the world, right? This is important to highlight. This is not only for US-based uh, companies, but it's anyone that is truly interested, as Gary, you highlighted, 
to really optimize the delivery of, of, of capital projects, right? The research and the publications, for those of you who are joining us today and might not be aware, it's important to highlight that PPI is, you know, going back to what you said, Gary, public, putting the, a lot of sort of publications online, putting this in LinkedIn. And so there are different ways of accessing the content that PPI creates and disseminates with, with the objective of creating a body of knowledge of PPM and the use of enabling technologies, right? Yep. This idea of PPI thinking, I, I found this to be a, a great idea on, you know, as you said, doing short write-ups on, on a specific topic or a specific group of ideas, right? And incentivize thinking people in the industry to really look at how they manage the projects differently, right? What might be potentially the gaps that they might be missing when it comes to optimizing the delivery of capital projects. I'm sure that in 2022, given the COVID conditions globally, we should uh, find an opportunity to restart the in-person uh, seminars, but I'm sure that people will also have the opportunity to look at multiple webinars, not only by, by PPI, but also probably in partnership with other organizations in other parts of the world. And the last comment is about the working groups, right? You mentioned the working groups. Uh, there are two new working groups that you mentioned that are going to be created. This is very important, just sort of reflecting what I heard, Gary, here. So if there's something I missed uh, that you think is important in the message, you know, the working group will become a very important sort of engine that also we incentivize organizations to explore and do proof of concepts and look at really making a modern construction a reality, right? Yep. Not only about PPM, it's also about using enabling technology, digital technologies, as you mentioned, right? One question for you, Gary, very quickly, since we have a little bit of time. Can you say more about the certification in terms of timing? Uh, you mentioned programs with Cal Poly, you mentioned programs with Texas A&M, different formats, different structures, potentially different target audiences. Can you, can you elaborate a bit more? I think this is something that the industry has been waiting for quite a long time. And when can they access the certification programs in 2022? Okay, great. Just really quickly, the, the first in the queue is the Cal Poly uh, program. And again, this is more targeted towards the general uh, building sector or anyone looking to take work offsite and do that effectively. The first class is going to be December 2nd and 3rd. And in my closing, I'll give it a little announcement on where you can find that information, but you can go to the Cal Poly website or to the PPI website and get access and get enrolled. So we'd encourage you to do that. The uh, first class with Texas A&M will be March of next year. And then with Stanford, we're taking applications. So as soon as we uh, select a couple of companies, we'll be working with those companies to design those programs and get them launched. So all three are live, all three are moving forward and well into the design and ready to implement phase. Excellent. Thank you, Gary, so much. And given the time and our agenda, we will transition to our next session. So thank you very much for the PPI update. Thank you.